Y'all ready? Welcome back to the casting couch. Casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, that. It's you may say that. That's funny. Welcome back to the casting couch. You gotta start off by like just BSing around. Like start off. You just gotta start like it started off. Yeah, exactly. Are we are we live or recording? Hey, what you got? What you got? Are we recording? Yeah. Speed. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Here we are. We are at the shores, literally the shores of Santee Cooper. We're, we're on the edge literally. of the canal. We're, <laughs> <laughs> this ain't the shore. This is on the edge of a little, a little black, dugout canal. black water dugout yeah, canal. We're in a little baby ditch. I did see an old uh, Megalodon tooth fossil down there. <laughs> hey, you still on that, huh? Yeah, you can go in there and get him $100 on eBay every day. $100. <laughs> ah! uh, anyway welcome back guys i got my guys here with us uh we're back again for another tournament another episode of the casting couch hey man i like that i don't it's mind catchy. That. Uh, that's catchy that's catchy it is catchy, catchy. casting couch casting couch don't be getting in the comments now <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, don't do it, don't do it. I mean, all right so. guys what are we talking about today that's what i really well, well first off first off you got to congratulate my boy dc God. Hey. thank you hey. Thank hey. you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Five, 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 man. Five, five, five. 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 Six, six, six national, seven wins? How many How many tournaments have you won? So you won a Bass Open. I won a Bass won. Open, won a lead. Won a lead event. Five of these. Swimming a jig and punching. Swimming a jig, punching. I did not have a black box. <laughs> did not, bro. <laughs> did not have a black box. And then you've won five, four BBTs in, a, in, a, in Red Crest. Yeah. Gosh, dang, that's crazy. That's smashing. Not bad. Now, yeah, they, not bad. Probably, not bad. Man. It's been okay. He, I mean, I, now I'll say this, okay? I, now I will go in just for a minute just to, to, to say this. I get a lot of questions all the time, and we all do. We all get questions by, you know, high school anglers, college anglers, you name it. And they're like, man, we – you know, we, we want to be fishing against you guys. You want We want to go pro and, and all that. Dude, I literally, like, remember – me being like 12. You know that Bassmasters video that me and you watched with the Dream On on it? Dream On. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that was epic. The whole time that I was in college, I remember this like it was yesterday. I would be watching that while I'm studying and just listening to it, and I could not turn off fishing. Mm-hmm. Could not turn off. It does not – like I don't feel that way a lot now because sometimes you got to turn it off. You got your family and yeah, all that stuff, sure. your wife. But I remember them days, man, and like, and I still, like, we're in it, all of us right now. We're right in the middle of it, and it's hard to believe. So it is nuts. I think we all have a little bit different story, but it's like, yeah, it's like all starting from from something a little different. But it's like that. that oh, whole, is it? We all it's, it's well, we all grew bro. up loving loving yeah. it, and and it's just like here we are. It's yeah. literally. I mean, it's 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 all our dreams. Yeah. We all got here different ways, but That's right. it was, we all had the same. Dream. I will say this, Mark, yeah. you probably had it the hardest <clears throat> coming from the West Coast. Coming from I mean, well, you traveled across the country for this. Yeah, man. You know, I always try to stand up and and speak up for the West Coast anglers, man. Obviously, me being a West Coast guy, um, man. We we don't even have BFLs, bro. You know that? Really? What? We the West Coast no BFLs, bro. The farthest yeah. West BFLs go is Texas. So Dang. all that fishing we out need west, to, we need to we slide Toyota out there. Series out we got there. Toyota Series that's hanging on by the by a thread, by a thread, yeah, because of the participation is not terribly why, great. Why is that? Though? Because think about how far you got to travel when you live on the West Coast. So let's say you live in uh, Washington, yeah, and your first derby of the year is in Arizona. You know how far that is? Well, damn like near be on tour with us. Hours. Yeah, no, it's longer than that. Fifteen hours. What? Probably twenty two. See, like three hours. Fathom See, that. We y'all, have so, yeah, y'all West Coast guys, y'all y'all drive ridiculous well, hours, and that's why you won't see a guy from you fish know the whole schedule. Yeah, fish. He gonna he gonna come when it when it comes close to him. Yeah. Columbia River or something. He gonna jump in that. Then it's the Delta, uh, 16, 17 hours. I'm gonna pass on that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Or it's like if you live in Dang. Alabama and you fish the Southerns. The furthest you might have to travel is uh, four Florida. or five hours. Five Florida, hours. No, you might do Florida. I mean, six, six eight, eight hours. hours. Yeah, ten hours. Reasonable. Yeah, yeah. yeah you drive so it all in one day. Yeah, it's tough for the West Coast cat, man. But uh, yeah, man, it's 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 hard to make it from my West, bro. So that's why I'm even more. It's it's for show a dream, bro. To Absolutely. Be yeah. So 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 I want, I'm just just real quick here. I wanted to hear who's who's <clears> your not not in any order. What's your top five 
that come out of, out of the West. Like, well, and hey, not in any order, not in any order, but like, just like, who's who's the top five out of the West? Like, in your mom, like, like I know there's a lot of all great time, English. I know all one. Time. I all know time. one. I know one for sure, too. Hey, man, it's that's, that's, number that's, one, that's, number that's, that's tough, man. The number um, one. You asked me to pick the number one? No, no, no. no. Oh, top no, five, no five. order. No, no order. order. Man, five. I, man, that's tough, brother. Uh, Aaron Martin's for show on there. Numero no. Yep. For sure. Um, man, you got to you gotta throw Skeet on there. Skeet's, Skeet's a Skeet beast mode, bro, for many, many years. Absolutely. Uh, man, I'm going to throw one out there that's probably unpopular, and some of y'all probably don't even know this, Gary Klein. Oh, you know Cali. Gary, you know Cal, Klein from Cali, bro. Dude, I didn't know. I didn't, know. I didn't know really that. realize that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've OG. known that. I've known but that he, for a while. He, he moved to. Yeah, he's, he's from he's Oregon. He's been out here so long. Yeah. yeah, he left when he was 19, bro. I've so, seen pictures of him holding up fish, and he was young, young, Oh, you young. wouldn't even recognize and You know what's crazy is Gary came up today and, like, shook my hand, and I still oh, am yeah, like, man, man you're a damn legend, respect, big bro. dog. You, yeah, you got some of these cats, when you see them, it don't matter. I don't care what's going on. It's instant respect, bro. One of these. It's one of these. It's still, it's bro, still humbling. Exactly. It's still humbling at these meetings and just having conversations with some. Yeah. Like talking about Skeet. I mean, I literally walked out with Skeet, and I'm like, gosh, dang, dude. This is what you grew up with. Watch it. Thinking yeah. back of like being Skeet trashed him on like a seven inch Bastrix. Oh, like, that, that was owners. bad. Dude, that was and then he that was on, like, Then he freaking went on that thing, terror of catching like them giant ones on what? what he was catching them on the Osprey. On the Osprey top uh, uh, at uh, 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 uh Smith Mountain. Right? Was it Osprey? Smith Mountain? Yeah, yeah, Smith Mountain, yeah. he trashed him. That, that was like, in the, that like, was when the swim bait phase kind of started. Yeah. He went and then like, Kennedy smoked him out there at Clear Lake, Lake bro. On a that was the Trash. swim bait. That, that swim bait was his box. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the box. The box. Hey, the yeah, box. Uh, hey, yeah, yeah. Back then, you pulled that out. It was. That was oh, where it was oh, at. Oh, oh, Gertrude was gonna come find you. Ooh. That, that was that she was really tail interesting. Just, yeah, but you couldn't see her. <laughs> you couldn't see her. <laughs> hey, now you see her. Yeah, you, you would learn so much. <laughs> yeah, that, imagine. That's yeah. the thing, though. Like when you think about back, like back in the history of like the sport. There's like eras, yeah. Like of like stuff that goes down, yeah. Like like the chatterbait era, I like I mean it's still it's still catching pretty good. Speaking of chatterbait, when's the first time you seen somebody throwing a chatterbait? I think we all did. When when, when was the moment that a chatterbait became famous? Do y'all remember? Mm. <laughs> like for me or like nationally? No, nah, nah, I'll just tell you. Attention. I want to me, turn them and I was go. I want to hear. I want to hear your story first. Not Johnny. Morris, but Rick Morris. <laughs> oh, Rick Morris. in the Kissimmee <laughs> River, throwing a smashing. white chatterbait, and he was smashing down there. And everybody was talking about this. He's throwing a, a Rad lures with, chatterbait. He's throwing a, a. It's called a chatterbait. It has a blade on the front, and I mean, he's really catching them good. And I think that's when Luke won. Mm -hmm. You know, you know who put it on the map first <clears throat> it was Thrifty. Mm -hmm. Was it Thrifty won an, a, a, a Toyota series? Which ever started at that point? Was time. this before three hundred and sixty or after? It's, just, it's after. <laughs> it's, it's, it's after. No, 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 it's before. Before. It's before. It's before. Yeah. So, 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 so well he, before. it was like two thousand five. <laughs> right. This is two thousand five. Thrift's first win, um, before he started fishing professionally, I'm pretty sure, was on was on a rat was at that point in time rad Lewis chatterbait, and he won down in Okeechobee. Right. You remember this? I do not actually. He won Okeechobee. He trashed him. Trashed him. It was unbelievable, and, he, and 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 that was sort of the kick. Like he kicked it off. Then I remember going to the boat show. I was 15 years old and buying a Rad Lures Shatter, but I still have a few of them, the old school ones, the OGs. And I went and fished a tournament with an old man in an aluminum boat named Greg Morehouse on the river. I used to like beg, like to go jump in the boat with people. Yeah, because like, I didn't have a boat. I was 15 years old. So that's why I remember it's 2005. And and I uh, we won the tournament. We had like I don't know, like it was like five. We had like fourteen pounds of largemouth. I mean, dude, they they ain't never seen that thing before. It was oh, yeah. unbelievable, <laughs> unreal. Sure. It was unbelievable. So that it's still that good was great. Bait. Bait. Damn yeah. good bait. Hey, I'm, it's, a, I'm gonna throw one this week. It's it's super efficient. Adrian, tell us about your uh, beginnings real quick. Man, uh, beginnings of what? Bass <laughs> fishing. 
Bass fishing? <clears throat> yeah. We're talking about of chatter lo- base, of so. <clears throat> No, just bass fishing, you know, like the beginnings. Because here's my thing. Mark came from Cali. We know. We've heard Jacob's story. <laughs> he came out of the womb with really need some guns. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, when that, I tell that, you, he was. Begging to get on them boats, boy. <laughs> It was it. He had bass thumbs straight out the womb. <laughs> <laughs> he was born with them. <laughs> he had little baby, baby thumbs, like with bass hey. Like literally, it was unbelievable. like sandpaper thumbs. Hey, he he come he out. He had no fingerprints. He he came out of the womb. And they wouldn't even cry. And he was doing this. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting ready. <laughs> oh god! So so what, what? What? Tell tell us a little little yeah, sneak peek. For, for me, for me, I, I didn't grow up like you guys. Fed up with bass fishing. So for me, <coughs> honestly, like. Pretty much, even in high school, like I seen bass fishing on TV and I turned it off. Like I didn't think it was cool. Really, honestly, straight up. Yeah. And then, uh, but I didn't really know about the whole tournament side. Nobody in my family bass fishes. You know, everybody saltwater fish. They deer hunt. That, they do that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but it was my senior year of high school, going into college. I met a guy. His name's Dominic Simone. I seen him on a lake. I was literally Dom. in a, I was literally in a fourteen foot pontoon boat, trolling bombers. In this middle of the sand watch, like reeling them in, bass, reeling them in. <laughs> what? Trolling didn't, bombers? Literally trolling bombers. Like literally trolling crankbaits. I, dude, I didn't know how to cast. And you were I, catching I, I was literally trolling with like spinning rods. And I met Dom. Dom, That's he crazy. called over. He called me over there and he, he was wanted to show me this bass he caught. And it was like a six pounder that he caught on a jig. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know what a jig was. So this was, I mean, literally, we're talking about 12 years ago. You know, unbelievable, bro. Yeah, maybe like 15 years ago, but uh, yeah, that's what, yeah, about 15 years. Yeah, and uh, and and that summer he kind of took me under his wing. I fished a couple club tournaments with him, and then I when I went into college, I started fishing collegiately, and then it all started. But like for me, the tournament aspect of of bass fishing is what what thrives me to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I, I'm a competitor. Love comp- uh, yeah, I just, I love to compete. <clears throat> That's right. <clears throat> yep. And then once I learned that, I was like, oh, I was all in. Hey, know? I'm still tripping so, on you trolling bombers, my trolling guy. Trolling bombers, dude. Reel them in. <laughs> Reel them in. For bass. <laughs> Not yes, sir. See, see, what you guys didn't realize... That was the start of the open water ah, roamers. You was on Dude, it. I was on it. Oh, you was innovative. Yeah. He's, I was on look it. at you. He's starting to dive it. into I mean, another little, subject. Little did I know. Yeah, they should have been like square F- bills because they float so high. Gosh. You had a little four. F- <laughs> I'm, I'm just, no pun intended. You had a little four front little forward <laughs> thinking right then forward thinking, we're gonna dive into another subject oh. we talked about well we're on this camera now i'm keep looking at this yeah, one this, this is camera one, okay this hey is hey camera one we're talking uh, to you now um we're gonna dive into another later. subject now i don't really understand there's such an obsession about this i don't really know we're gonna keep it pretty uncut me and jacob may argue a little bit i'm excited about it i'm excited about we're it. talking about the black box not the one on an airplane. Not him. Not him. We're talking about four phase sonar. Everybody, that, uh, in my opinion, it's the most hot, hottest topic. It's been it's been out for six years. It's the hottest, oldest topic in bass fishing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, yeah. Uh, I think it, I think it's went mainstream now. There's more people. I would say over the past six years, there was like a twenty percent niche on like. On anglers, like twenty percent of people were using it. Now, a hundred and twenty percent are really taking advantage of it. Wow, well, they we all have it. Everybody ain't taking advantage. Well, yeah. exactly. We all have it. It's all accessible. Sure. To I don't think there's a single boat least. on tour with us. Yes. That does not have. I'll be honest with y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot you some straight <clears throat> facts now. No, no, <clears throat> no offense if you don't have it or not. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can still catch fish without it. I do all the time. Sure. I did this week. Yeah. Yeah. Grew up without it. We've won tournaments without it. Yeah. It is what it is. It's just another tool in the box. Um, I've now pulled up to a tournament to to a a gas station here in Alabama at least that did not have that kind of technology on the boat. Side engine, down engine, four face sonar. Every single one of those guys, Alabama Bass Trail guys, I got them, and they're getting really really well with it. We're learning so much about bass fishing. Yeah, it's unbelievable how much I've learned and how. What's the word I'm looking for? Pelagic. Mm-hmm. That a lot of fish Nomadic. are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nomadic, pelagic. They got tails. They swim. Yeah. 
Never really knew how much they swim. My goodness. So, um, anyway, enough of me talking. I am going to say this. Uh, this this is a hot subject. We just want to touch on it just a little bit, get a little bit of thoughts, kind of mill around. And uh, my opinion on it, I think it's the best thing that's ever happened to bass fishing, in my opinion. And I'm not trying to be biased. I, th- I just I've, – I've had a lot of success with it. I've had success without it. Mm-hmm. I've just learned so much about what these fish do and, and trying to understand their habits. And uh, I love doing it. It's one of my favorite things to do. I, just, I love learning. I will say this. As an angler, I think we never stop learning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You well, have to you always do, keep learning. I don't care what it is. Yeah. yeah, sure. And now we have this available. But uh, I, what's all the hype about? Well, what's everybody whining? Well, well, what's all this crying about? My gosh. Well, I mean, I think you, you, this is the thing. Okay, If you, if you go back in, in, in the sport and you look back, okay, so throughout the years, technology has always been a part of the sport to an extent. Um, when you look at it, um, and, that, and that's the best way to look at it. So, like, you look at a flasher, David Fritz utilizing a flasher back in the day and understanding util- and cranking a, a post 300, post 400 on stumps and, and, and points and finding schools of fish before anybody knew there were schools of bass out there. Mm-hmm. Um, then all of a sudden going down to 2D, man, I'm sure there was a lot of flack over, oh, you got that dang, dang, dang 2D. Mm-hmm. And, and then, that, you know, that was a huge ordeal. I'm sure, you know, I, and I wasn't during that era, um, but probably the most, the biggest impact, you know, in our lifetime up to this point with side imaging and down imaging. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. And so I look at Alton Jones winning the classic on Hartwell side of imaging, um, like broken timber on the inside timber line on a football mm-hmm. gym. So that's how he caught him. Um, that was sort of like the start of the, the side imaging craze. Kevin obviously dominated. This sport has always been, been to an extent all the way from David Fritz on, Paul Ice on has always been dominated by the anglers that adapt and learn the new technology and understand it before Fast. everybody else. Mm-hmm. 100%. And, so look at thrift. There's a great example of this. Thrift's the best, and I'm putting be honest with you, the best at using 360. Is he the best at using four facing sonar? No, he's not. But he was unbelievable, and he always had a leg up on the competition because he understood his 360 better than anybody else. There, he knew his cast. Mm-hmm. He knew exactly he knew his rate of where fall. everything was at. He knew everything. He knew holes in grass. Absolutely did. He, he literally looked, watched that thing and understood the lay of the land. Mm-hmm. Instantly. Instantly. And he knew how to make that cast and do everything he needed to do with 360. Yes. So, so it's always sort of been that way. It's never been more apparent, though, when it, it's never played this much. It, shallow water, deep, pre-spawn, spawn throughout the entirety of the sport and that's really where i think setting us up that's really where it's gotten a lot of flack because it's not been one thing now of course starting the season off you know you're gonna get a little bit but that's to me like that's that's the biggest that's the biggest pushback on it. i think uh we'll throw this out there one last time so uh, when 360 came out when all the side images and stuff i remember it um i grew up I know, I know. I think we all know how to use a flasher. Um, I grew up. I had the first boat I had had a flasher on it, mm-hmm. and I remember my brother would take me. I tell you exactly where. I'll give you a waypoint. Mm. We were below Jordan Dam. There's a big hole down there, right past the uh, old gas line, and there was a big hole. And Robert Perret, his father-in-law, was like, "Hey, you can go down there and jig a spoon and catch the crap out of them." So we get that flasher and we go in that hole and you, you see the bait. It mm-hmm. just looked like a line right mm-hmm. there. It'd be solid line. Mm-hmm. And we jig that jig that spoon and we we drop that spoon down on that flasher and we jig it right above it. And we just ease around out there in that current and we'd see something go shoo, doop and we catch yep. them on that flasher. Yep. That, that was the coolest thing Spots? ever. Spots, yep. And they were fish on it's bait wild. with yeah. a flasher. Yeah. And and I mean I called my brother right now. He'd say, Yep, we caught them on a flasher. Same ones we Literally still, remembered yeah. it. Same ones we scope now, but <laughs> yeah. we catch them on flash for them. So anyway, long story short, um, going to social media, we didn't have social media back in back then, and I'm sure all the slack back then was the same way. Them guys would roll up with these big fancy units with 2D on them, and guys didn't have nothing on there. Like, oh yeah, yeah they got all that technology. Mm-hmm. So it's a very conservative industry that we're in, and uh, 
it's just new stuff now. So, what do you think, Mark? Yeah, um, man, I, you know, I don't know, man. I, I got mixed, not mixed feelings. I mean, I, I think for us as professionals, it, it's undoubted. You have to adapt and roll with it and learn it and and be proficient at it. Otherwise, you're gonna get left behind and stomped into the ground. I mean, that's just where we at now, right? <clears throat> so as a professional angler, I like forward facing sonar, right? Mm. Uh, I've learned more about bass in the last three years than I have damn near my whole life, just to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. It's phenomenal. That's, that's most guys. I mean, that's what I'm OGs saying. OGs are saying the same thing. Dude, it's yeah. crazy. Caught like, a lot more bass, too. Caught a lot more bass. Hey, well, we thought bass did. We ain't had a clue. Mm-hmm. Big dog, back in like September, October, November, when they didn't run water on these lakes, like generating lakes and, yeah. and, and maybe in ten, even Tennessee River and stuff like that, we, <clears throat> we'd be throwing like a white buzz bait. We had no clue what they did. All right. We had no clue. Ain't now we clue. do. It's the most ground, like, shattering Dude. thing that we do. And, and I think why you see, too, you, you, said, you said a key point earlier. Four facing sonar, Garmin dropped their first live scope. Seven years ago? 16, 17? 16, 17, somewhere yeah, there. Didn't now, Christy win using that? Uh, I, now, listen, I don't class, think. The classic. St. Clair, you talking about? Yeah, snapping but, a tube. but it wasn't that a good tube, You ain't casting. So, so, so then He's not that was like Gen 1. You might see like a cluster. And it was like globby. Yeah. You couldn't really. Oh, it, the target separation was not good. It, right. you know, but it was still it, very innovative, right? Absolutely. It was cool. It was cool. But we didn't. And, and we didn't know what we had. And what's happening now, fast forward six years, and it's like going nuts on social media. Everybody's screaming and kicking about it. Mm-hmm. It's because not only do we all have it, now we actually understanding what the bass do and then mm-hmm. further how to utilize and exploit the live scope to single out and catch these bass. Mm-hmm. And once you figure that out, big dog, ain't no going back. It ain't no going back. Mm-hmm. And so it's just we we continue to do it and we continue to excel at it. You, Jacob, you guys have won several tournaments doing it. But everybody, the world's seeing that. So what do you think they doing? They doing it too. So everybody's scoping now. Mm-hmm. And so the, I think the fans' issue with it is they're just seeing it too much. Like, I want to yeah. see it's somebody It's just very do monotonous. It's like, it's, like, yeah. it's, it's like a smallmouth tournament over and exactly. over and over and over No matter again. where you, you know go. Where, yeah. And look, and I'm going to be honest, we're here this week on, a, on the shores of Santee Cooper, yep. which is not – I've never even been here, but just looking at the lake, if you know anything about the lake, you can say this is not your typical place to, to live scope. It is not. The place is no, full of trees no. and timber and grass and just a lot of visual targets, right? But mark my word, you guys will be seeing this after the dirt. But listen, but mark it. There will be guys that do very well, and they will be using live scope and or active target. I, I would and agree. there'll be anglers that do not catch them. <clears throat> utilize that will be in the all. top ten. Yep. Say it again. I still be anglers that will not catch them. Sure. Focusing all their efforts oh, absolutely. towards that. You know, it's, it's absolutely it's, it's the it's mm-hmm. the case of have and have not. It can scenario. lead you down a, a dark hole too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Just, just FYI, I'm planning on posting this tomorrow. Yeah. Ah, even better. So, yeah. That's yeah. why but I this set is, him up. So this is even better. So this will be posted during the, while the tournament's going on. Yeah. And I guarantee you, there will be guys doing that. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Adrian, what Talk you think? Him, before I go in, because I'm about to get hot and heavy. Ooh. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like sucking. I, you know, I fish because I like <laughs> reeling them in. Straight up. And if I'm going to have a tool that's going to help me reel bass in and get bites, I'm going to utilize it. And, 100%. Uh, I mean, I think I think the same thing with you, Mark, and I, we can all pretty much say the same, is we've learned more over the last couple of years really understanding how these fish move and how pelagic they are and how nomadic. I mean, they don't – we always used to think – Bass used to stop on a point, and after a point, you slide into a pocket to spawn. Mm-hmm. Okay, these bass don't do that. <laughs> I mean, they just not. out there roaming around. Now, the hardest thing with forward-facing sonar as general is being able to distinguish what's a bass and what's not. Right? Correct. And that's what really is, is like the difference maker of the guys that are good and the guys that are not so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, I think I, I do understand where, you know, maybe people are getting frustrated because it, it's it's almost a nuisance, right? I mean, it's literally the same thing over and over and over again. But at the end of the day, 
I signed up to fish these bass tournaments because I like ruling in bass. And it's fifty seven hundred dollars per entry fee. God, yeah, I don't remind and, you, my boy. I have and, to and you're say crazy that. if I'm not going to utilize it. You know, am I going to have four? Oh, that ain't cringe worthy. Seminar? That's the truth. Mm. And I mean, I, I'm not going to have four or five of these. You know transducers on my boat i'm gonna have you know one maybe two but uh i think i think it's pretty it's pretty awesome it's 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 wild to see these ogs right these guys that we looked up to these guys have been doing this you know bass fishing tournaments for 20 25 years yep and for them to even say i'm not gonna lie i'll take my hat off right now i've learned more in the last two years watching you guys pan around and watching how these bass act with forward facing sonar than I've learned my whole life. That's like, great. And I, and I, and I think that. that's really been hard for a lot of these guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The ones that have been. Imagine fishing that. your yeah. whole life for 30 years and, and thinking that, that you had it all figured out. And then it's like, what the crap? And then you see, here comes the nitty gritty part, if you're still here. <laughs> And then you see some of the, you know, some of these younger cats, like 18, 19, 21, 22. I mean, you see Drew Gill. Youngsters, uh, Young smashing. guys. Coming out here and Still just milk straight smashing. <laughs> and they've really perfected that, and they understand, you know, the, I guess you'd say, the 80%. Mm-hmm. I've always said this, the 80%, 80-20 rule. And a lot of these lakes had the 20% that live on the bank or near the bank are the most pressured they always have been and they're still the most pressured and it's almost like they got what what did we call them that one time they done got they, they were in the beta club yeah, they, they super smart yeah they, 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 <laughs> yeah, they valedictorians straight up yeah. they, they Magnum, see the most Magnum lures but if you ever tap into that 80 percent, it's game on yes sir and now you can so my thoughts on the whole deal i'm not going to bore you all to death I think it's uh, an amazing tool if you're willing to use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. But it's here, where, and it's here you, to stay. Where do you see it going, though? Here's where I see it going. I see it um, – I don't see it going nowhere. No, he's, he, no, he's, no. he's meaning where, like – I mean, I'm not saying where do you see it going as far as, like, where is it in five years? Right. Like, more, like how, how, like how more advanced is, is the technology I'm not, I'm not, like – you know, I'm just – I'm, like, asking the question because I'm, like – and, listen, I'm – I've – I've taken advantage of a Ford fishing center. We both have. Mm-hmm. Um, we started our careers swimming a jig, throwing a buzz bait, running the bank. I mean, I won the first tournament that I, that uh, the All American, you know, dragging his <clears throat> tube and yeah. catching him on top waters and stuff like that. Right. Won Forsford Cup, throwing a top water and flipping and stuff like that. You know, I, I love that. It's like that's ingrained in me. But like what I was just asking more so like where do you see it going in five years like is it 10 years here's Where's my thoughts on it I'm mean, gonna say this one comment and then I'm gonna touch on that let me debunk one thing before I say that um I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna catch a little slack on this that's fine the, the idea and the notion that you just put this transducer on there and it's just you go out there and just reel their ass in yeah is so false that I've ever seen it in my entire life yeah you're telling me that that's like spotlighting. Well, why ain't eighty guys out there catching hundred pounds? Mm-hmm. I mean, it ain't like like you seen in videos of them just yanking them in mm-hmm. off of, of an offshore boat. It is nothing like that. You, if you ain't around them, you ain't around them. And if you don't have the instincts to find them and know the water colors and know every little piece of brush or whatever it is and know how to alternate those and know what fishing pressure does to fish, have a strategy on top of that. It ain't gonna pay off for you. You can't just plug that sucker in and play. Yeah, yeah. And 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 that's that's the biggest misconception <clears throat> that I see in comments. Now that's my opinion. If y'all hate me for it, it is what it is. But to where you see it going? But what I say, <laughs> I had to say that. That, that stuff. That, I had to get that out there, boy. That was that was weighing heavy on me. Here's where I see it going. I see them limiting transducers. Um, there ain't no sense in having three, four, five of them. There ain't no sense in having these giant screens on there. I, I don't like that. It's not a bad, it's not a good look for bass fishing. I, I think I think it's the optics. Twenty four inch screens. That's just terrible, dude. It, well, it's just it's perception is reality. That's it. And, and this is the facts behind it. We could do our job with two nine inch ACS nines. If we had to, that's it. We we just are given the opportunity, and, and you also have to understand this just to give you guys a little insight. We a lot now, not myself, but a lot of anglers make their money on the electronics they get. So if you get a bigger screen and a bigger unit, 
that's more value and gives you an opportunity to sell your boat for a higher price. And so that's, that just is what it is. So like, you know, think about it. If you're going to add value to the boat that you're going to sell at the end of the year, why wouldn't you do that either? Right. And it's but, very nice to have. And right? it is nice to have. Yeah. And we're getting older in age. We need bigger screens. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, yeah eyesight's definitely going down, but that's, that's the thing is I think it's uh, the perception is you need everything you right. need, right. you know, you don't though. You, you, you don't. Now listen, we, we do though. <laughs> <laughs> Who does though? I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this: we're out here fishing for a living, straight up. It's business to us. Yeah. I go out there. You got to use the uh, things available to you to catch them, mm-hmm. and that's 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 us. Mm-hmm. Now, if you had, if you if you're at Jimmy Bob's Pond, probably don't need that stuff. That's right. Straight up. No, and, and I think so. I mean, what, what's your thoughts on that? I think I think ultimately to on. me. No, I'm just saying, like, more so, like, I think perception is reality at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, you don't have to. I mean, I mean, I, like, even I like on my aluminum boat, right? Yeah. I got it. I only have three graphs on my aluminum boat. Yeah. I got one at the console, a 12-inch, which I have broken up into a, a four box, right? Yeah. No, excuse me, a three box, where I got a little bit of mapping. I got a little small piece of uh, clear down. view or down oh, scan yeah. or whatever. And then I got my side. Yep, And at the, on, on some real... You legitimately can get it done with that. Oh, easily. Like, for real. Now, because we are sponsored, right? You're not, but I am, Garmin, right? I can get, I can I can have four units, right? So I can put two up front, two in the back, or three up front and two in the back. And obviously, that makes things bigger. I can do my job a little bit easier. I can see things clearer, et cetera. So, yeah, that is nice. But is it necessary? Absolutely not. You know what I mean? You can get it done with just... Not even th- you really don't even need the three, but I got a live scope unit up front, and then I got my two D mapping. Hey, man. question real quick. So. This is off subject. You know the <clears throat> Aquaview? Yeah. Not not hating on Aquaview. Never used one. Don't know nothing about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty cool. It doesn't seem cool. It does pretty cool. cool. So you've used one? Yeah. Okay. How long have you used it? Three, four years now. I mean, I've played around. around with they've it. been around for a while. They've been around for a while. For a long time. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to. I'm going to. DC going to go in. I'm going to. I'm going to put this into <laughs> perspective. Going to in. put it in perspective. Hey, why they've you been around for six, seven years. Hey, why you put it in perspective? Why you, you put? Why you put it in perspective mode? What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Scout mode. They've been <laughs> Aquaview. <laughs> Aquaview have been around. These, these underwater cameras literally shoot like underwater camera. You can yeah. see what's down there. They've been around six, seven years. Yep. If the whole mass is, if two tournaments were one on that with smallmouth, like bed fishing or something like that, and everybody got their hands on it and become a new fad, everybody be whining about Aquaview. But y'all ain't whining right now about it. Yeah, because you can't whine you know why? Because seeing them and catching them is two different things. And that's what I tell people about even with four facing stone oranges. hundred percent. It's legit the same. So you can see them, but that don't mean you're about to catch them, bro. Mm. You know, that's just yeah. fun. It, 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 it's fun to figure it out, but I think I think the biggest thing is this, okay? Like, as, as professional anglers, yes, we utilize our electronics, and, you know, we go to these bodies of water that we, like, this this week, we have uh, two and a half days to break down Santee Cooper, which is two lakes, Moultrie and Marion, 170,000 plus acres of water. And so, yes, we're going to utilize days. more screens, more map cards, because at the end of the day, we have less time to break down a body of water. And if it gives us 10% more efficiency, we're going to utilize that. That only reason I was saying the fact of, of screens is because I, don't, I just don't want anglers out there. I remember the first time I got 2D. I remember the first time I got GPS on my boat uh, in my little my pro craft. Back yeah, in the day. yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it, it looks, we do everything we can to stay on top of the game. Yes. For sure. But that's not necessarily every local angler, you know, it's, it, it's applicable for everybody. Right. You know, oh. so if it helps us to be 5% more efficient, or if you catch two more bass, or you find one right. more hump or point, there, there's value in that. Fishing's fishing. It is. It's always an unknown. Where do you see it going? So he you still didn't answer, answer the question. I'll see, I'll tell you exactly where I see it going. I, I'll be straight up. Probably lose some followers. I see people <laughs> whining about it until they get done whining about it, and you either embrace it or you're done. You think they're going to ban it? Cut. The tournament organizations. <laughs> you, you think the tournament organizations will ban it no, at some point? They're not going to ban it. They're, yeah. they're, no way. Yeah. I'm That's just cool. telling you right now. Imagine going to St. Clair for all my northern guys. I know y'all been to St. Clair. Imagine going to St. Clair and plucking again. Blind. <laughs> I wouldn't even do that. I'd crank me yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is the thing, is the thing. 
Okay, there's really three major things with Ford Faces Sonar that you have to answer. One, is is it negatively impacting fish populations? I don't want to hear that. That's it, not a it, valid argument. That, 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 we release that, our fish. That ain't, I'm, oh, I'm just saying, so, so, <laughs> yeah, but so I'm, 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 all I'm doing is playing devil's advocate and yeah. bringing up the, the other the side of the argument to where you can discuss that. How many times, how many, oh, oh, talk about, let me, let no, me rewind. Let me rewind. That's, that, let me rewind. that's good to bring that up. I, I'm glad. I, that, I was going to, Adrian, I was I'm sorry I'm talking so much. Because I'm about to go in. I'm going to let DC, because if we're, this no, is no, 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 no. Listen, hold on. Before you go around, let, let somebody else talk. Hey, no, hey, no. Let, this ain't ahead, 1973 no more. Ahead, we ain't holding up stringers of bass no more. People True. don't hardly eat bass no more. Crappie? They, they might be getting yeah, hurt. Hey, them crappies taking a beating right they, now. They, they, they getting hurt. Size knocked off. They, bad. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no Jacob's going to list his three. That was one. No, uh, so, three, so, so let's start with that one first. What, and what was that? Oh, the impact it is having on the yeah, fisheries? Yeah, so where's, where's so the look, impact of the... Let me tell y'all something. So this is where, and I was almost started on this, but I didn't. This is where I send my... I, I, I see... Let me say this. My stance on forward-facing sonar as a professional angler, you have to have it. It's mandatory, right? Now, I do see both sides of the coin, bro. I do too. 100 percent so i don't disregard it the chatter about the conservation aspect we are literally catching bass that we never once had a clue lived in places right mm -hmm. okay now imagine going back be very difficult <laughs> you, you couldn't be very like, difficult. imagine going back knowing that the population lived behind you but you can't cast out there <laughs> but look but what do you but adrian <laughs> Okay, you go out there and you catch and you target and you specifically target start this uh, and top water. this this eighty yeah. percent. The random co anglers used to cast out the back of the boat and pull a pocket. You, you go out there and target this eighty percent that we never could fish for, right? Yep. These are the reasons Toledo Bend is such a fire fishery, right? Uh, Sam Rayburn, you name the lake. These super fire places, O H I V, right? Mm -hmm. These places are like that because we wasn't out there caving their heads in for the last 50 years. Time out. No, this, hold on. This is truth, bro. Mm -hmm. Now, to kind of segue back into where do you see it going, yeah. but I'm going to be on the on this side of it, on the conservative side. Bro, those fish are going to be so educated. <laughs> yes. It's going to flip-flop. It will, and then the bank will become the new – Middle of the lake, yes, and vice versa, and, and I agree with that. But guess what? Then they're gonna be you're gonna be burning the candle on both ends. That's right. I so, agree. so I do semi understand the argument. No, I I, I 100 percent. Yeah, Wait, for sure. Here, here, here. I want. No, I can't I, wait for DC's hey, reign. Oh, I'm going. All I, this wait. is building up in this everybody thing. Everybody else have a conversation. Yeah. That DC goes. I'm last. going in. So listen. What, I don't literally. Go, this, this I want the this solo new, piece. Hey, new rule, new rule. When I ask a question, you can't comment until everybody else says something. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, ooh, come on. Go ahead, Adrian. Man, I mean, the thing about the thing about forward facing sonar is, it, it, yeah, I mean, we are putting a lot of pressure on bass that have never got pressure before. So, I mean, yeah, clearly it's going to. I, I don't know if these fish are going to get accustomed to it. Like, yes. there's got there's got to be a point to where. You're gonna beam one. He's gonna swim away. Do you 100%. do you do you feel like that? Do you feel like that? And we could all talk about this one. Like, do, do, <laughs> do I have permission? Just, I mean, this is your podcast. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just sorry. You, you gotta raise right. your hand. Hold up. Do, 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 hold up. You can let, let, let it go. Do you feel like they they feel the beam? Do you feel like they feel a beam? Yes or no? Yes. I feel a carp definitely do. I do not think bass do. I don't think bass do, but carp definitely. Believe, do. I do not believe. Listen, I do not believe bass feel the beam. I think they hear it. I think they hear the ticking. I think they hear that on the side imaging. I think they hear the boat. I don't believe they feel the beam. So, so that omnia sonar and saltwater boats. Yeah, they swear they feel it. Really? Yeah. All the sport fishing guys. The big so there's certain guys. fish that I can see that. So you truly <clears throat> believe that? Okay, let's think about this conversation. Well, I'm typically. Rush. Typically, whenever you feel like they see the beam, they're then they don't bite. They're like thirty feet in, in correct. Beyond. So it may not necessarily be the beam. It's just they're too close to the boat, and they're like, oh, and they know your presence. Oh, that. They know your presence yeah. there. They yeah. hear the boat. Oh, you got two sonar ticking. Well, it ain't even sonar. It's, so it's trolling motor sticking like three foot in the water. Yeah, it's yeah. literally a pole sticking in the water, and they they're coming toward it, and they're like, what is that? What is that? Yeah. Uh huh. 
You know, so yeah. I don't know if they hear it or not or I feel it. I, I don't know if it's a feel. It's a – I think it's a feeling of something ain't right. Senses. That's right. The senses. Yeah. It's just the God-given Mother Nature intact protection it Just puts gene. them on alert. Yeah. They just yeah, I'm like, about yeah. to get filleted. I better right. not if I, if, I, if I bite this, it's over with. Folks. That's right. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm – I uh, I was gonna mention one thing. Hey, no, hit that rent one time. Where, where you was about to you was about to go in. Yeah, Jacob's not here. You can go now. Yeah, go ahead. And Thanks, light, Jacob, light for not up showing up. I was gonna rant a little bit. So you mentioned like Sam Rayburn and stuff. Toledo yeah, being well, just, how are we on those time? Those are just we a good? couple examples. Oh, you're, you're good. We can wrap anytime you want, but we're good. This is this is actually really good. Shit. Really good. Okay. Yeah, you I, almost I, said the S word. Those are just. I, I did. You see me stop myself? Yeah. Those are just a stuff. couple examples. There's so many fisheries like that across this country. But I just I want to hear your thoughts. Okay, here's my thoughts. Now I'm gonna go to a very in depth explanation right quick. You ready? You say that all these lakes are so great. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Go pre forward facing sonar. Mm. Go to Lake Fork, arguably one of the best lakes in the country. In September, October, November, December. Trash. Trash. But I Gunnersville. Ain't, I ain't named Lake Fork. Gunnersville. <laughs> Trash. No, no, no. Gunnersville's still good. In the fall, Gunnersville good. Yeah, still good. Dobbin. Dobbin, yeah, you flipping frog. Oh, oh, wait. Hang on a minute. If I not remember, Paul last one with 100 pounds and everybody else was dobbing and throwing jerk baits, catching 14. Well, he still caught it was pounds. trash. A hundred pounds is still catch a hundred pounds. Well, he caught a hundred pounds on the Alabama, Alabama rig, rig, which was banned with never the five seen it lures at the time. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> it, it has now showed us that these lakes have got them. They know what to do year round. We can catch big bags year round. Gunnersville was freaking unbelievable this fall. Yeah, weights that you've never seen before, yeah. and it's it's freaking amazing to see. But like, dude, I'm just tired of like relying, waiting on them to show up for me. Like quit like we, we we've now as anglers like not relied on them on that warming trend. It's like, oh man, next week it's gonna warm up. They'll show up and then they'll be on that one cypress tree we've casted forty eight times at your house on in Weoka Creek at Lake Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I now I see the transition happening. I can sure. watch a pattern happening throughout a lake. They they're oh okay they're here they're here they're here. All right, and you learn so much. That's what I love. There you go. I mean, that's, that's, that's my rant. That, that's, that's, a good I, that's, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. So, so we talked about a little bit about where we think it's going to go. We talked yeah. about. So, do you think this is one question? Do you think what's the percentage of 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 professional anglers in in five years that are going to be solely dependent on forward facing sonar? God, that's a scary question. Yes, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, don't listen, put me on I'm that. Not, I'm <laughs> no. not, I'm just asking these tough questions because I know you guys want to know. Solely dependent. Solely dependent. I'm talking, does nothing more. Hey, you got you to talk to the wife, man. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's 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 a tough. One. So, so so you're talking about the uh, guys that are competing because I'm talking about a lot professional of guys. anglers, professional anglers. I'm talking at the top level of sport, the Bassmaster Elite Series or mm -hmm. the BBT. Out of those, what I think Bass is 110. So let's just say 200 guys, somewhere in there, 190 guys. Mm -hmm. So let's say 200 for easy math. Out of 200 anglers in five years, how many of those anglers are going to be solely, completely dependent on that technology? Just mm -hmm. all of their, everything they do is dependent on that. Is that including guys that have been doing it for 20 years that are still? Yeah, I mean, it's everybody. I'm, I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking, you, I'm you talking the whole, because you got to think, every year. Not just new. If you we, got, we, not new draw, bloods. we will have, by that draw. time, we'll have 50 anglers yeah. the VPT. And by that time, you know, so like you'll be really at 150 anglers. But, you know, or 160 anglers. So, so as anglers drop out. Yeah, new guys and come new in. guys come in yeah, yeah. every year. I think the bigger question that you need to ask is, is how many tournaments are going to be won on pelagic fish or offshore? Like, I utilize my 2D all year, all everywhere I go, whether I'm in Florida or wherever. So if I'm looking at my graph, I was still paying attention to my graph and the water temp and 
the water color and i'm looking down and i'm like all right oh there's some grass down there below me so i'm paying attention to it but like guys have always paid attention to grass now guys just strictly scoping everywhere man i'm gonna be honest with you just the the opportunities in the lakes that we go to big dog you 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 gonna have a good half schedule but that stuff ain't gonna play all the time you no, gotta know what's up i agree with that I mean, like, we're going to Lake Eufaula in May. I got a feeling they're going to be prime spawning time. It's going to be dang hard to beat out in Jones, buddy. I'm just telling you. That sucker knows. See, and that's, I, I, I got there's a, a time and place for everything. Okay, so, Mark, I, mean, I, I, I think I think we are now at a time. Now, right now. When I five years from now, right now. Mm-hmm. Or there will not be a tournament. One and or guys in the top ten. Doing well, not utilizing forward facing sonar. I don't care where we go. Mm-hmm. You see him. You, see, him at, you see him at Okeechobee. What they doing now? Shout, shout out, shout out, Scott Martin on this big win. Yeah. But you see what he was doing, mm-hmm. bro. That ain't that is the that is the new way of bass fishing. Bro. It is. Do you think that plays so, more? Sorry, go ahead. sorry, Adrian. So my opinion <laughs> on it is: so say we drop ten guys every year. Yep. Right, ten guys. Which is five. So right say now. so say okay, whatever. Yeah. I, I honestly think that say if we got ten guys in, eight out of them eight out of them ten guys are scopers. Yep. Straight up. I so I think wow. over a five year period, I'd say seventy five percent of our field is gonna be scoping. Completely dependent. Completely on a black box. Yeah. I mean, I ain't gonna say completely, but it's gonna be. Heavy I'm not. Play. Hey, I'm just. I, I'm, I'm, t- just I'm telling. Tell- and I'm telling you right now, the guys that aren't, and you're seeing it now, the guys that are not are not in the top ten. So just think about it. Like, I mean, if you don't adapt and if you don't start doing oh, it, I mean, I'm out, not going to lie. Nah, I'll, I'll say this. Our format, consider that. Okay, yeah. So so which one? Yeah. So right. which one Which one plays right. bigger? Five fish or every fish counts for a four? Oh, I mean, I mean, definitely every fish counts. But you talk about a place. You think so? Every fish counts? Yeah. For, 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 for four fish facing center? No, I would say five. No, no, it plays way more in every field. I would say five. No, because guys what? can hop in a backwater like Poche and go frog them up five or 18 pounds yeah, in, in a five-fish like, tournament. Yeah, but to me, in a right. five-fish, I can I, – I know – this is the difference, though. In five-fish, I can specifically know there's a big one on this stump spawning. Or there's a bit – there's seven places I need to hit tomorrow where the biggest dots are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I focus all my energy there, mm-hmm. right? I can – Focus everything there and generate those big fish to bite and have a great day in a five fish tournament. Yeah, it's not always that way. And and now nah, you're wrong. You're, you're not always a more efficient. <laughs> I just said, no, you're wrong. You're, you're not <laughs> so without forward, without forward facing sonar. No, you can't focus on them fish out in the middle of the lake. That's literally dominating all these tournaments. Yeah, but that's the time of year though. It doesn't matter. You don't think so? No. Spring, fall, don't matter. Yeah, yeah it does. Okay, so question. All right, all right. Matter. We're at Santee Cooper this week. I can't. We don't know what the tournament's going to do. It starts tomorrow in a five fish limit tournament. Yeah. Guy goes and flips cypress trees. Y'all, <laughs> y'all know there's a bazillion, <coughs> excuse me, bazillion of them on this lake, cypress trees. There's mm-hmm. a million of them. But a guy gets in a little zone, like it may be a little half mile zone or whatever, where these freaking biggins. Okay. That's notorious here. Five fish limit. He catches five of them suckers for 28 pounds. Mm hmm. He loads his boat. He rides back wherever he's going. The next day he goes out and he gets in that little zone, 28 pound, 28 pound, 28 pound. Big dog, you ain't beating 28 pound with the daggum box. Mm-mm. Four phases so so, 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 here. Well, what, I, what I'm saying is like, okay, Okeechobee, Scott wins. Scott Fish did have up. 40 years of experience Fish, on that Scott lake. Wins. <laughs> Scott wins fishing a way that's a little unorthodox. And he's front side. Down. Front side. Yep. Only catches a handful a day. Doesn't catch a lot of bass. In my mind, every fish counts format. You're not going to win that way. Yeah, but you he'd have fished different too. Correct. So, but, but, so it's but, hard but to, to say me, that. like to me, like you're not going to be able to generate enough bite shallow in that scenario. That you're, was a really unique scenario. But but 100. percent I'm unique. saying. But in that scenario, you're better off making casts and fishing on your gut and every fish. Like in that scenario, shallow. And generating bites and like, ooh, that cast are on these side and cypress trees. Boom, 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 boom. You know. Yeah, but Scott may have been able to do that, but instead, he was just focused on the big ones. Yeah. Like, right. he could have been using perspective and 
catching Could've. a bunch of males, right. you know? Sure. Right. I think what's going on, I just thought about this. So all of our lives, the, the, the only time, like around most places, not Florida, they get on bed for one month. Yep. Well, yeah. the mass yeah. majority of them. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I would agree. The, the 80-20 rule flips for one month. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it goes back to the same. Mm-hmm. And I think fish. there's two or three different aspects that, that contribute to that. Number one, fishing pressure. We are the predators of bass. Mm-hmm. They know that. I mean, other than gar or whatever. Gar. I know you're cutting me off. I know, but we're not done. <laughs> 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 oh, no. I thought I seen you over doing this. So, so we're the predators of bass, right? And they know fishing pressure. They're scared to death to get up there. So they go up there and they spawn, and then they get pe- pestered with the whole mm-hmm. time. And then they're like, we got to get out of here. So fishing predators have really changed that. And I don't know whether we blame ourselves for all these years of pressuring them on the bank, but they dip out now. Okay? They do the same thing in Florida. Mm-hmm. They're like, dude, there's way too many boats buzzing around. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. They leave. Poof. Mm-hmm. They know they cannot survive doing that up there. Mm-hmm. So, like, now we have a tool to go catch them out there now. And all the guys that are still on the bank are really, really mad about it. That's what it all boils down to. You know? So, that's just where I think. I actually have a legit question. Go ahead. This is from someone who doesn't bass fish, right? Go ahead. I do, or I pretend to. Is it more detrimental to bass fishing to use forward-facing sonar to the fishery? Or is it more detrimental to have a legit just spawning tournament you're bringing these spawners in? Oh wow, that's a really good answer. Good, good about, question. So you talking about in a five fish scenario? I think if you're bringing them in, that's probably worse. Well, to- that's the toting worst. them in is. I mean, or, or even like think about a smallmouth spawning tournament. Too. Yeah. There's a lot of perch around them beds, and they don't take a bit of second. Yeah, I mean, even I, if you're catch weight release. Yeah, yeah you're opening up Pandora's one. box. There's yeah, that's, gonna be some comments now. That's, that's a tough. tough. One. That, that, that's a legit question I've got. Like, we yeah, I mean, so so I, so you just, you say that, like, look, you know, like basically we're just talking about like, I mean, it, it's tough because no matter what we do, it's like we're all targeting bass. You know, there's, right. I mean, they're, 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 you know, it's like in that during, during the biggest their most vulnerable that, time, one hundred percent. The biggest thing that we will say about the conservation of the lakes and all that. Catch weight release. Catch yep. weight release. I don't see a lot of people putting in fish in live us no more. I, I don't. No, nah, I mean, but even 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 successful. if you look at all the years we've been boxing them up, bro. a lot of people like the hero shot. Yeah, everybody wants to do that. We've been yeah, boxing them up for that. years, though. Yeah, bass, FLW. Ain't no wrong. It's fish. legal. Yeah, Box it's, them it's, up. it's fine. And you know, oftentimes those fish make it in the early parts of the year. They make it. We we do kill a significant amount of fish as well, mm-hmm. specifically smallmouth, but. You know, it happens. Um, but if you look at a lot of them fisheries, they still really good. Yeah. So is it really detrimental? I don't know. I mean, That's a great question. DNR would say, what, you get like six or seven bass a day, you're only bringing in five. So. Right. Hey, I'll tell you what. This right. is all, I'm going to end the podcast on this. I'll tell you what's really detrimental is all them Asian carp that came out of the Ohio River. Man, in the Kentucky Lake. And they into the Kentucky Lake, and they yeah. trashed it. And then they lost <clears throat> tons of money because everybody left the lake. That was really detrimental. For sure. But nobody wants to talk about that. Do you think it was just Asian carp, though? No, huh? I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't. I, don't I, think, think, it was, I think it was a combination of several things. Yeah, I think it, it was Asian just, carp had a, an impact on it. Yeah, but the <clears throat> like when I say the government, the the, the, the now that was bad. Yeah, they did nothing they for did two not, to three they years. Did not, nothing. It's coming back, but it, yeah, it was it was bad. And yeah, and I know people personally back. that left mm-hmm. that lake. They had a lake house that was their dream retirement home. Gone. I'm out. They went to Gunnersville. Too much Asian carp. Moved their whole life. Wow. Because nothing was done about it. Wow. And y'all worried about now, us now panning back, a couple though. bass. <laughs> now, it's, on, now, it's, now it's getting back, though. Yeah. I don't it's know why back. that thought came from. but it, it, It's getting back, though. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, there's a lot of things that can negatively impact fisheries. There's no doubt about that. So, no, for sure. Well, hopefully we negatively <laughs> impact these bass this week and put a little <laughs> hole right there in their mouth and let them go. So we're here at uh, the shores of uh, Santee Cooper. And we appreciate y'all joining this rambling box that we had tonight yeah, about the, the casting couch. The, the casting rambling. <laughs> I, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, hopefully we catch them this week. Nobody knows. It's been fairly tough. The water's cold and muddy, and 
I don't know. I think there's going to be a lot of big fish caught, but I don't know about numbers. I have there no idea. There will be a lot of numbers caught. I don't see that happening. No. Don't see it. That. Um, a toughie. It's going to be a toughie. It's going to be a grind. No matter what. It's going to be a grind. It, it'll there be some bass call, but there will yeah. be. There will be some bass call. I, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I like a lot of diversity in this tournament. I, yeah, I, I feel like it'll be a very good, very diverse tournament. It'll be a, a breath of fresh air. I'm kind, of, really I'm, I'm kind of scared to rate practice again. Are we doing that? Last time, what, Jacob J-Dub said a four, rated a four. Top ten. DC gave it an eight. Like quick. Just give your numbers quick. What do you think I'm going to rate a practice. The last term, last tournament, I rated mine an eight. I'm going to go with an eight. Ooh, back to back. Damn. Hey, you're gonna win again. Like lethal like weapon. That I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm, <playing. laughs> I'm gonna go no, below I'm average. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go a four. I'm gonna go a three. Four. No, two. actually, I'm gonna say a seven because I have no idea of what I'm gonna catch. I'm a three. I'm a four. I'm a three. And he's a three. Well, he said a four last time. He yeah, had a top two. So look, this is what you do. You take Jacob's numbers and multiply and time three. <laughs> yeah, hey, low key. <laughs> so if he says four, he's, he's out he, of twelve. You a three? No, you were eight, bro. Hundred percent. Four and four, eight. No, mark my word. This video ain't even posted. I got a feeling he's gonna reel in a ton of bass. I think all these boys are. So, uh, I mean, it, it, listen, it, 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 it's one decision. I'm gonna blank, or another decision. I'm gonna reel a whole bunch of them in. One of the two. <laughs> Everybody's that close. We don't for a know. Bad Seriously, it is it's literally. So I don't know. Well, hopefully, I look. Fingers crossed for uh, Santee Cooper. Hopefully, it's good for us. If it is, it is. If it ain't, it's out of course. Fold. Hey, We're gonna take it how it goes. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Till next time, y'all follow my boys. We out.